Good evening, you guys. <laughs> My name is Patricia. Um, just kind of give you a little bit of background of who I am. I'm, I'm a certified optician. Uh, does any of you guys know what an optician is? Hey, okay. I don't deliver babies because a lot of people think that I'm an obstetrician, <laughs> which I don't. I am an optician, and basically we are one of the part of the three O's. And I'll get a little bit um, get you guys a little bit familiar of what it is that I do and the other three um, counterparts, which is our optometrists and our ophthalmologists. Um, when we go further on in. Um, I am the manager downstairs at the optical shop, the Gavin Herbert optical shop. Has any of you guys been down there to visit? Yeah. Hey, okay, hopefully it's been a good experience. Um, I've been there for about a year now. Um, we've had some changes in the past uh, couple of months. We are now a um, finishing lab inside. We have, um, so we're edging our own lenses. So our turnaround time is gonna be quick. Okay, so um, plus a little, you know, we're, kind of advancing. <laughs> we started small, but now we're kind of expanding a little bit bigger. Um, so hopefully you guys in the next couple of months, you guys will see the, the new renovations that we're going to have going on. Um, so I'm glad that you guys come this evening. It, it takes some time um, out of your guys' busy day. Um, hopefully we'll kind of go over a couple of things about annual exams and the importance of and just kind of streaming along from why it's important and you know from now to you know uh, we have some younger people in the crowd we have some more mature people in the crowd so the different types of exams we're going to be kind of going over a little bit so that kind of gets you guys familiar with okay so how many of you guys do annual exams okay now annual exams are a little bit different for everybody sometimes you do an annual exam based on your need you're not seeing quite as clearly as you can can be or you have been before or sometimes it could be brought on by a certain condition that you might have you might wake up and feel something that's not quite right you might see what they call an onset of floaters you guys have you guys ever experienced that where it's like there's something there but i don't quite know what it is now sometimes floaters can be minor and sometimes they can come on rather heavily um, with floaters, you gotta be really careful because if you see an on-stream of them, that can be some type of um, optic nerve damage or something can be going on that you must see a doctor immediately. You know, you wanna kind of make sure that you get that taken care of. But occasional floaters, sometimes you'll see something kind of passing by. Those are just blood vessels that have died off and they generally evaporate over time, okay? So a lot of people get their first, oh, go ahead. When you say see a doctor, well, if you see like a shower of floaters, because say it's 10 at night. go to the you emergency room, the you go to the emergency room. Yes, okay. yes, because that can be a sign of an attachment, mm -hmm. um, and you don't want that to to you don't want to wait on that because there's no reversing that. So what will the emergency room do? They usually have um, doctors on on call. They have some ophthalmologists, some optometrists. Believe it or not, there's there's things that happen. I know nothing ever happens in the afternoon, on a weekday, it always, just like veterinary, you know, I've had my pets have to go to the doctor and nothing ever happens during the day, during the weekday, it always happens after five o'clock on a Friday <laughs> and you're like, where do I go? Um, and that's happened, my son has had to go to emergency room and they've done some things with uh, ophthalmologists um, or ophthalmologists that are on staff. So most, most emergency rooms have those. Okay, and they will probably refer you the next day to get more follow-up care. But yeah, any type of flashes of light, onset of floaters, that's something that needs to be treated right away. Okay. Does, has everybody here wear corrective eyewear? Or not yet? <laughs> okay. Okay, so there's a couple of phases that we go through bef um, that show the importance of having an eye exam. Okay, the first one is at infants. A lot of patients don't know or a lot of parents don't know that you really should that there's programs out there to have your child seen and had their eyes checked at a, a very early age. Six months to 12 months infancy program is is a nationwide program that allows um, that has several doctors in their group and what they do is they allow for free exams for infants. A lot of parents will go in and they'll get an exam done with their children and they just go to the primary. They do that well baby check. All the well baby check is doing is just checking to see if the child can see shadows or movement. Doesn't check if there's any refraction. 
And so, and so a parent thinks, oh, okay, this is fine. You know, they've done the well baby check. And it's not until they progress further on along the years that then they discover that, oh, there might be some type of strabismus or an amblyopia, turning of the eye. Um, that usually doesn't get caught until about maybe one to two, two years of age. And usually any type of turning of the eye is usually when they're stressed, when they're sick, or when they're tired. You'll start to see the turning of the eye. Um, so infancy was brought on to help parents kind of have the understanding to bring your child in, get their vision checked, not just going through the well babies. So that's really our first introduction to eye exams. Then we get into school age. Checking for kids. One out of four children need vision correction. I spent two years in Santa Ana and Garden Grove um, doing free eye exams for those um, from kindergarten through the fourth grade and then from sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. And you should be surprised how many children needed glasses mm -hmm. and how many parents were reluctant to participate in a free service for them getting glasses. Whether they were in denial or they just would tell us, my child doesn't need glasses, but the nurses were like, yes, they do. They're, they're, not, they're not passing the test, but the parents were like, absolutely not. Um, and it was pretty sad to see some of that going on. But most of the children, up until the age of nine, you reach visual maturity. After nine, there's really not much you can do for kind of vision therapy. Before then, you can actually do some, some vision therapy to help the child, especially amblyopic. My daughter. <laughs> She is um, what you consider monovision. She does a plus and a minus in each of her eyes. Didn't know this until she was about in the third grade, because I would say, can you see the plane? Oh yeah, I can see the plane perfectly. Can you read the letters? Oh, I can read. Not knowing that in one of her eyes, she was 2,400. <laughs> she couldn't see across the room to save her life. But she did that up until the third grade. I'm in the industry and I had no idea. Had I caught that early on, they would have done what, they would have probably prescribed what they call patching. Now patching is basically covering the good eye, so it actually allows the brain to kind of force the bad eye to work. And so that can only be done before the age of nine. After nine, there's really not much that can be done. Then they're, they're just corrective spectacle eyeglass wearers for the rest of their lives. So that's really important. So that's kind of the second introduction to, to getting your eyes examined is going into school and getting those done. Because it's pretty much mandated now in, in the elementary schools. They are trying to pass to where it's like they did dental a couple years ago. They mandated in California that in order to be enrolled into school, you have to have a dental checkup. Now they're starting to look at vision. Having, you know, I, I go every once in a while to the meetings with the Board of Optometry, and that's something that they're trying to actually um, kind of put forward in the schools is to make sure that the kids are getting their eyes examined. Because you get a lot of, what happens with children is if they don't see well, you're gonna see one or two different types of activities. One, they're gonna be shy because they can't see well, so they don't wanna participate. Or they're gonna act up because they don't see well and they feel that they don't wanna be excluded from anything. Mm -hmm. So they'll tend to act up. Um, but a lot of teachers and a lot of parents tend to misdiagnose that b bad behavior by saying, well, they need to be seen and put on some type of you know, calming behavioral medication, which really, I always tell my students um, that I teach that you know, the first thing you should do is check their vision. You know, when, when kids get into trouble or even they did a test with the prison systems that a lot of the inmates, once they get into a prison system and they get their vision checked, they realize that a lot of them, a high amount of them have unchecked visual correction. Okay, that's, that's a behavioral thing. You know, you, you, if, you, if you're not fitting in and you're not seeing, you're gonna probably have some kind of issues later on in life. Um, so getting your, your vision checked and encouraging people with school-aged kids to get their vision checked quite frequently as well. Don't just rely on the schools. So there's other times that you're gonna, that vision and having exams is important. Driving tests, mm -hmm. you know, work-related job requirements, um, military, if you're gonna go into the military. Now, when my son was smaller, I always wanted him to be a, baby, uh, a Navy SEAL. That was my big thing. 
you know, first son, Navy SEAL, Navy SEAL. His whole nursery was done in Navy SEAL. Went down, got posters and everything. And when he first got his eye checked in school, they told me, oh, we think he's colorblind. No, <laughs> he's gonna be a Navy SEAL. Um, when I would ask my son, when he was five, what are you gonna be when you grow up? A baby SEAL. <laughs> he was gonna be a baby SEAL. <laughs> and I was like, what, baby SEAL? Um, and, but he ended up not being colorblind, yay. But he didn't end up going into military. Um, he ended up going into video game art development. <laughs> but he also was a cook. Um, so, you know, it didn't quite go the way that I wanted him to go. But you're also gonna get vision checks for sports. Sports is really important too. Um, uh, and of course, nowadays, everybody's been looking at those phones. It's becoming a little bit harder to see. And believe it or not, as we get older, we started having, you guys probably have noticed, probably around the age of 40, that, that presbyopic area, where it's like, oh, I can't read the shampoo bottle anymore. <laughs> or I get a little bit closer or further away, you can't see. Well, now, believe it or not, 20 year olds, 19, 20, 21, are starting to lose that ability to accommodate. So basically what it is, is accommodation is when the lens of the back of the eye doesn't flex as easily as it used to. When you're young, that lens, crystalline lens, just flexes. So, I mean, it's just dodging back and forth. You can, you can go from distance to near, distance to near. You get a little bit older, that lens starts to harden, and it doesn't have that flexibility anymore. And so what happens is somebody will put something in front of you, and you're like, okay, you know? <laughs> you're like, I can't see it. It takes a while. Because that lens takes a little bit longer to, to flex um, the older we get. So 21, 19, 22, those ages are starting to see that lack of flexibility because what are they doing all day? One focal length, right here. That's all they're doing. So they're not, they're not moving their eyes as, as easily as we used to or how we used to do it all the time. Gaming, you know, they have to have good vision for that, but you know what they said? Mom said, don't sit too close to the TV. <laughs> You're gonna go blind. <laughs> um, you know, so there's a lot of different checkpoints that we have. Senior. Then we get into senior, okay? Once we start going, it's a whole other different reason why we go get our eyes examined. It's no longer just for vision, it's more for ocular health, okay? Making sure that things are being tested. Um, when you're younger, some issues can happen. Um, diabetes is a big factor nowadays. You know, that's, that's, it, it's huge. Um, I have about three pairs of glasses. <laughs> mm -hmm. Depending on how compliant I am with my sugars during the day will determine which pair I'm gonna be wearing. Like right now, I have a pair of contact lenses in. I can barely see the back of the room clearly because the contacts that I have are basically for arm's length, because I'm going to be I'm on the computer most of the time during the day, and I don't really care what's going on further on down the way. But arm's length is important. If I'm going to read something, I put my readers on. Mm -hmm. So it doubles the prescription that I have in my contacts so that I see closer in. So the stronger the power of the lens, the closer your focal length is going to be. The weaker, the further out. So if I were to take my contact lenses and maybe put, I have a point, point seven, point, plus 0.75. If I were to take them out and put maybe a quarter, I would be able to see the back of the room. So, and then I would put the glasses on and I'd be able to see the computer. Then I'd have to put my extra strength reading glasses to see up close. Mm -hmm. So there's always sorts of different things. Every day, I changes. Again, it depends on how compliant. I'm a recently new diabetic. I've only been a diabetic for four years. Um, it's type one, not type two, unfortunately. It's, it happened because I had an appendix rupture and it damaged my pancreas, which changed my whole life from four years. Because even if you're just type two diabetic, it changes everything. And, and it's nothing more frustrating than not having clear vision. Because it, it frustrates you, you can't see as well. And it just, you know, it just makes things a little bit harder. So let's get into talking a little bit about why you should have an annual exam as a senior, as a more mature adult. A couple of issues here. Presbyopia usually happens around 40, okay? That, that distance length. It's coming a little bit sooner now because again, students are not flexing the eye muscles like they should. Glaucoma. Glaucoma has, there's three different types of glaucoma. Open, closed, and um, what they call, I think, natural glaucoma. 
But basically, it's fluid in the eye, creates pressure. Uh, closed angle glaucoma, there are no symptoms. It, it happens. So it's, it's best once you start to get around uh, 60, you want to start having those, those uh, exams done because you want to make sure that nothing sneaks up on you. Because some of the stuff does sneak up on you. Okay, macular degeneration. Okay. Cataracts. Starts usually younger, moves forward as you get older. Um, how many of you guys have had cataract surgery? Oh, okay. <laughs> both eyes or just one? They oh. usually do both. Yeah, both. Yeah, it's, it's not fun because it doesn't, it's not, as soon as they see a cataract forming, it's not, okay, we're going to get you right into surgery. It's, we got to wait till that cataract gets ripe. They call it ripe. And ripe means basically you're having very, a lot of difficulty. You're talking about maybe a plus 20 diopter in, in power that you need just to even see any type of vision. So until that happens, then they'll start doing the surgeries. But it usually takes a little bit. Diabetic retinopathy, again, I have to be checked every year. Actually, more often it, uh, than, than every year. I get checked every six months, mm -hmm. you know, because you want to make sure that your blood vessels aren't overgrowing because sometimes they'll leak and it'll cause blood um, in the eye. And then dry eye. We get a lot of, yeah, we get a lot of patients that are suffering from dry eye. The older we get, the less amount of um, aqueous that flows through the, uh, the eye system. And then sometimes there's a reverse. Sometimes your punctum gets plugged and you have too much moisture coming out. So there's, there's all sorts of different things. So presbyopia, again, it's a normal aging process, starting a little bit earlier. Glaucoma, it's when your optic nerves gets too much pressure, okay? It can cause some damage, macular degeneration. What, has anybody had any dealings with macular degeneration? Okay. What, what's the, um, when the doctors prescribe a colored lens, what's the best color for that? Do you know? Brown. 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 Because it enhances the colors. It pops your reds, blues, yellows, and greens. Um, it's the best thing for macular degeneration. So if you're starting to, to get into that field, you're going to start hearing your doctor doing those recommendations. Cataracts, and I'm fascinated with cataracts. In my industry, I always partnered with doctors that specialized in cataracts because cataracts are fascinating if you've ever seen one because um, they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. They almost look like snowflakes. Mm -hmm. they're, 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 it's a beautiful thing, I think. <laughs> they're very pretty, but, but I definitely take that and um, uh, that's one of my areas of interest is cataracts. Diabetic retinopathy, again, is a, it's a condition caused by blood sugar and blood pressure. In the tiny blood vessels in the eye, they spring a leak and release blood into the eye. Okay, so that, that's very, you'll start to see, um, if you go to any optometrist or ophthalmologist and they do retinal photography, that means when they take the picture of the back of the eye, when you see it, re, diabetic retinopathy looks like, like leopard spots on the eye. Um, so, and that's basically when the blood starts to pool. Okay. So again, let's, three different O's in our industry. We have ophthalmologists, we have an optometrist, and we have an optician, which is what I am. Okay. Ophthalmologists are basically your surgeons. Okay. They're your specialized um, eye care provider. Your optometrist is, in, well, and ophthalmologists are going to do corrections based off of surgeries, um, medications, things like that. An optometrist, the difference between an optometrist is your optometrist is like your primary physician. Okay. They'll do the refractions. They usually will do visual, vision correction with eyeglasses or contacts, any type of medical device. They usually don't do surgeries, but some can do LASIK surgeries, but most of them will just correct with just eyeglasses. Yeah. And the optician, we're the pharmacists. We're the ones that fill the prescription. We're the ones that you go to to get um, advice on the type of lenses, the type of materials. It's more than just, oh, that frame looks really beautiful on you. It really has a lot to do with how your prescription is going to accommodate in the frame that you select. Okay. I'll get some patients that come in and they want this beautiful frame because, they, you know, they're cousin Anne has this great frame and it looks so good on her and I want that exact frame. 
well, your prescription is, <laughs> is completely different than your cousin's. And so unfortunately, that prescription is not going to always um, be the frame is not going to always accommodate that prescription. Mm -hmm. So we're there to give you advice. We're also also um, trained to fabricate lenses. Um, again, like I said, we have a new lab down in, in the, the optical shop. I actually make the glasses. I've been doing this for about 25 years. Um, you're going to meet my counterpart, who's been in the lab industry for, for several hundred years. <laughs> um, so there's, you know, there's a lot that an optician does. Um, there's a lot of advice we can give you. Never just bypass and, you know, and think that we're just into sales because we're not. We're, you're a good optician is going to basically tell you what it is that you need and should be able to kind of help you with selections. Okay, and and it actually analyze your prescription so you feel more comfortable with what you're getting. Okay, because the best thing you can do when you're getting eyeglasses is ask questions. Tons of questions. There's no question that we haven't heard, but there's always things that we can help you guys understand because it's confusing when you're getting glasses. Okay, it's confusing. Where do you go to get glasses? Right? It's like why why can you get twenty dollar pair of glasses at online? And you go to Costco and you get $80 glasses and then you go to your private optometrist and it's $500. How does that happen? Okay, so there's a lot of different variations or variables that go into why there's such a cost difference. A lot of it is overhead. A lot of it is, is who's making the glasses, how they're making them, where they're getting them from. But I'm going to tell you right now, plastic is plastic, glass is glass, metal is metal. There's specialty types of metals. So there's, there's going to be some variation. And of course, you know, just like cars, you have a Lexus and you have a Toyota. They both got wheels and they both got a motor, you know. But there's certain things that you can do that are going to make one a little bit better than the other. So when you're looking at cost comparison, you have to compare apples to apples, okay. You have to ask questions. What is the material I'm getting? What is the warranty I'm getting? Because that's important too. You don't want to just get something and then find out there's no warranty on it and you know, then you're stuck and then the cost kind of goes up with that. So you have to look at exactly what your cost is to, the, to what you're getting and, and the longevity of what you're going to be wearing. Because glasses is this important bet investment, right? Sometimes when you're there, it's like buying a car. <laughs> you know, it's like, do you want this wheel? Do you want that? Do you want hi-fi? Do you want... Um, so it's just... Use us as opticians to help you guide your way into in what you're doing. So what makes the difference between an online? Well, the cost, but the quality is also not there too. You know, something happens and you get your glasses in the mail and they're kind of crooked, where are you gonna go? Can't go online. You know, so you, you're gonna go to your eye care provider and probably get that taken care of. So there's different choices out there, okay? You just have to be selective and you know, your eye care provider can be, can be chosen by several different things. It could be your vision care provider, right? You can only go to this certain person or this certain place because that's where your vision insurance um, is, is take. So basically, when you're using an independent, you're going to get service that's pretty much close to you. You know, online stuff is kind of harder to, to get those things going. Okay. So be selective because you got There's measurements <laughs> that need to be taken, um, and if you're not getting the right measurements, you're not going to get the best optics either. Okay, so it's it's very important to establish a relationship to where you're going to get your glasses. Try to avoid hopping around to different places, because the more we know, as you as a patient, the better we can serve you as we go along, because we know the changes that you're you're going through and what you're having to see. Okay, so you, you can always um, establish relationships with doctors, just like you're establishing relationships with the, the practice itself, okay? And once you establish a relationship with, with a good office, they'll take care of you. You know, they'll, they'll know what your needs are and where you're going and the things, and they can answer the questions that you need. Okay. So annual exams, they're more, not more than just seeing clearly. It's ocular health. Okay, making sure that your eyes are healthy. Um, it's important. The older we get, you know, things change. I get a lot of patients that wear contact lenses and unfortunately they say, well, I've been wearing the same contacts since I was 
20. Okay, you know, they're like, and my prescription's never changed. I don't need to see a doctor. My prescription's never changed. It's always remained the same. Well, yeah, but as we get older, our eyes change. The back of the eye changes. Inside of the eye changes. Just like, you know, unfortunately, just like our bodies, it, you know, it, there's, it's not always as uh, vibrant as it used to be. <laughs> So things, things will happen. So it's important to catch things early because the earlier you can catch them, the better you, you are, the chances are. It may not be reversible, but they can be treatable. Um, and that's the most important thing is to make sure that what you're seeing, everything is treatable. Ophthalmologists tend to be more specialized, kind of like your ear, nose, and throat doctor. They, you can get a physical from an ear, nose, and throat doctor. Doesn't necessarily mean that they want to do it, <laughs> but they can do it because they know they have the education behind it. An optometrist is almost the same thing. An optometrist is going to give you your refraction. Ophthalmologists can give you a refraction. They just choose really, most of them choose not to really want to because that's, they really want to focus on specialized cataracts, you know, uh, general eye diseases, um, things that can be corrected with surgery. So they'll refer to an optometrist. So unless you have something that's kind of, the older you get, you're going to start to shift from the optometrist to the ophthalmologist, which is your specialist. But usually if it's just a standard exam, you don't have any symptoms of cataracts or um, macular or retinopathies, anything like that, an optometrist will be able to do anything. And if they do see something, they'll refer you. It's easier and it's a lot cheaper <laughs> to go the optometrist route rather than the ophthalmologist. Right means when you're barely able to really see through that lens. Cataracts are kind of like um, a looking oh. through a dirty window. Uh -huh. Okay, so the dirtier that window gets, the harder it is to see out of, right? Because it's that film, you know, in the right film. So usually the doctors will use that word white. That means that it's, there's not really much more they can do to treat it with spectacles. And that's usually when you're getting up to maybe a plus 15 or a plus 20, and it's just like, okay, there's just no more we can do. There's only so quick a lens can get. <laughs> To help you. But also, so, that's presumably when <coughs> your insurance company will start paying for it, right? Also, I mean, that's the insurance key, right? has a lot to do with it, too, because there is a certain, there's a certain, um, I guess, uh, line that they draw that they will delineate between the insurance company and the doctor. And they usually try to do, get both lenses to be kind of close together so that, you know, and, and less one's completely, you know, sometimes you can have a good eye. Cataracts, there's three ways to get a cataract. Do you guys know the three ways? Age, which is long-term UV exposure. Okay. Steroids. Um, <laughs> steroid use. Steroid use. Um, mostly it's, it's born congenital cataracts. Babies are sometimes born with cataracts. Blood force trauma to the head. You hit hard enough, you can cause a cataract. And then again, long-term exposure to ultraviolet. That's something you'd have to refer to an op optometrist or an ophthalmologist. Okay. I'm not an MD, okay. <laughs> so I can't give that yet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not licensed to to, okay. to give that type of advice. 